Hello, folks. Uh, we're going to continue on and today. Um, well, right now, I would like to talk about you know the steering linkage. So we went into steering columns and we got a little bit in the steering boxes and all. So now I want to talk a little bit about the steering linkage. Um, and this is primarily on the linkage type systems that are uh, what we're going to be talking about. So uh, like always, let's go ahead and start up with the PowerPoint. I'm going to go ahead and uh, post this new PowerPoint. I've got the older PowerPoint up there right now, but I think the new one, uh, which is I just received, would be very beneficial to you because <coughs> the old one only has the verbiage to it. So, and you know, all pictures, you know, say a lot of things like they always say, huh? Uh, anyways, uh, try, I'm getting started here. Uh, let you know one of the things about the new PowerPoint. They start setting up uh, learning objectives. Uh, let me go ahead and back that up. Uh, yeah, you know, let's go previous. What am I doing? All right. So uh, this is, you know, I really kind of like these objectives, you know, when they start talking about different things. So, so, you know, you know, the identification, of course, you know, the rec and pinion inner and outer to and we, we, you know, talked to Reckon about Reckon Penion, and I'm going to get a little more into these tie rods, and we'll, you know, we'll talk a little bit of four wheel steering systems, and then you know some of the linkage, you know, that you know linkage needs to be lubricated. Uh, now some of the newer linkages are made of a different material, and they don't need lubrication, but still, again, we, we need to um, be aware of how to inspect them, and then you know, kind of the purpose and procedure for. Uh, what they call a dry park test. Um, so tie rods, you know, of course, uh, you know, on the very end, and, and here's a good picture right here. So here is my uh, outer tie rod and inner tie rods on this linkage system here. And you can see that they are a little more complicated than the rack and pinion type setups. But this is uh, pretty much a standard uh, kind of linkage, uh, linkage system on as, you know, a, on your steering. And here I have an idler arm. This guy, all he does is he just solid there and he pivots back and forth and he helps support the linkage. If we didn't have him in place, you would see a lot of weird steering going on. And what I mean by that is the wheels would not be very stable uh, when you go into the steering part. And then we have these tie rod ends. These are the little ball sockets that actually allow it to spin, okay? so. Yeah, we can't have, you know, bolded up linkage that's tight because then you wouldn't be moving around. We need a little bit of pivot going on inside that. So we have inner ones. I have a, uh, what they call center link and some guys call it a drag link. And then I have a pitman arm. This is the one that mounts up to the steering box. You remember, I, I kind of sh showed you that the steering shaft come down and then it takes that from there and it causes it to do this motion. And that's exactly what's going on here. This is gonna be pivoting here to here to make that actual wheels go in unison together. That's another thing, the, you, the wheels have to go together or else you're gonna have a lot of, you know, uh, kind of like skipping going on and you'll get erratic steering going on too. Some of the other things that they put into it, you know, to, uh, different types of steering, I should say, you know, things they put in it. These are different ones that they have out there. Here is the you know, uh, parallelogram type system. Then we got a cross center. And then we ha have the Halsenberg type one that actually uh, are, I see a lot of these here on their truck applications. And here's a actual, you know, a dampener. You know, again, we want a nice smooth and we don't want it that, you know, uh, jerking when it hits a bump or something. This kind of dampens it out a little bit. Now, the other thing is the ball sockets. These are, you know, little sockets that are inside. This is what I was talking about. They happen to be needing to be able to pivot a bit. Okay, so they have to be able to pivot around. We use the same kind of similar system in a um, uh, an actual uh, upper and lower ball joint, and you know we'll get into that in a little bit too, but. Here are two different styles that they have out there. Uh, th you know, we have one here is the uh, kind of a nylon wedge bearing. Uh, and then we also have uh, on the dual, you know, a dual uh, bearing uh, type system here too. There's this little sockets go in here and they're actually, um, 
down and usually they're wedged in there so they stay in place they don't really come out this is actually a different type of socket assembly this is kind of like a collapsible lip type one and you know different terminology the inner tie rod is also uh, called a ball and you know socket assembly the inner tie rod assembly are you know, attached to the uh, end of the rack and uh, steering rack so they're staked in there or they're uh, uh, they got a little you know rivet in uh, you know, or pinned into it or they're actually got a nice little um, bolt socket onto it too so here's one this is actually has you know you can see right here here's that you know pinned in place and this is here's the tie uh tie rod uh, uh, right here and this is a bo um, ball socket in other words it still has to spin a little bit too i mean it, it's going to go back and forth but it still has to pivot a little not so much spin and here's a jam a nut that actually goes into it too uh, here's some different types, you know, here is a pin type, one here is a screwed type, and here is a swedge type that actually goes into this one here. So different types for different applications. Uh, this is one rack and pinion setup, and you can see how they actually don't have an inner uh, tie rod. It just has this uh, bolt on type of symbol, a system here. Uh, this will allow it to actually slide back and forth. And they really don't need that pivot, you know, as much. So you know, power steering versus, you know, uh, front steer, steer versus rear steer. Um, this, you know, front steer also uh, called forward steer is the term used to describe a vehicle that is, uh, has the steering in the front of the, uh, the uh, front wheel center. If it's steering is a linkage, uh, the steering linkage is located Behind the wheels, it is considered rear steer. So here is you know what we're what we're talking about here. So here you see a rear steer. So see the wheel, it's on the back side here, and here's the front. So this attached to the front end. So look, you kind of just look at it as um, if it's mounted and then it attaches to the front of a knuckle or a, a, you know, where the actual bolts up to the wheel, then that's a front steer. If it attaches to the backside, it's considered rear steer. Uh, what is the difference between front steer and rear steer? I kind of just told you right there. So uh, I, I like this new, you know, program too, because it gives some cool little things like that. So four wheel steer. Now this is something that is, uh, was gaining some kind of, you know, steam back in the eighties. Uh, but now we're actually going back to it. It helps with parking. Uh, really good with parking. And, you know, they phase the wheels. Now, this is the good part. I, mean, I like this one. So uh, when it's going into, and, and they're going to, it's speed uh, uh, sensitive too. You're, you don't want these all jacking one way real quick, like, because then you can have some really serious problems, of, you know, as far as, you know, you know keeping it on the road, but it does help, you know, say we want to go for a lane change or we want to park the vehicle. This is what really makes it kind of, kind of nice. Um, so here we opposite phasing you know, and just depends on how fast we're going uh, when we actually do it. So this would be like something like a lane change. You know, I'm just going to slide on over or here I'm going to actually do a actual, I'm going to turn like this. And this is showing some of the phasing going on too. Uh, I like this too. It has frequent uh, questions, you know, uh, you know. And here's actually showing the dash mount is showing the way that you know the, the you know you can turn on and off the four steer wheel steer on some of the systems too. So that yeah, it's just a button on the dash and they'll just lock them into place and say, uh, so, you know, four wheel steers off. Or if I you know I want to park, turn the four wheel steer on. And it kind of guide you into that parking spot a little bit easier if you're doing like parallel parking and all. And here's what it, you know. Here's an actual uh, quad steer. Uh, this is front and rear. There's little motors built in. And you know, again, on, on linkage. Here, here is what we do when service work. If there are Zerk fittings available. And please understand that these air, uh, these little bags here, or these rubber pieces here, are made to inflate. 
and kind of squish out a little bit of the grease. Uh, if they come out a little bit, that's great. If those bags are kind of torn, uh, it's something we need to look at and possibly replace the actual uh, the, the tie rod. Uh, here's just showing a little bit of lubrication um, to actually keep a one. Uh, if, if it goes to full one way or another way, it kind of cushions that a little bit and lubricates it. This is a, kind of the uh, in lock. And here is that arm. So it's only going to go as far as to here. We put a little bit here, it kind of keeps down the rust too. So uh, dry park, the purposes, you know, it's the most effective way, you know, and, and yet easy to perform. Uh, steering um, component inspection method is called dry park. And we did this not just in the shop level uh, on our independent shop, but they do it in the dealership level and also in fleet. Uh, one of our inspections when we had to do uh, for CHP at USC, I was the maintenance manager over there, uh, is a dry, dry park. So we'd have an inspector come out and he'd do a dry park test. He wanted to see how much play there was in the steering wheel. Remember I said about all that linkage? That all plays into that dry park. If you that linkage is loose in any form, you know, either at the... Um, uh, um, the actual pitman arm or at the idler arm or the linkage, the balls are worn out and that, uh, that plays out to more of that, uh, even the steering box uh, can cause more of a um, actually play in that. So uh, what you, you know, some people do this, I, you pretty much after a period of time, you can actually get an idea of uh, what is, you know, two inches and one, 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 so on. So this is kind of one way of doing it. Uh, if you if you need to, you can pull out a ruler and see how much movement is going on. And you can see this is probably about two, maybe a little bit more. And it depends on what kind of you know system you have too. Some of the sports strings is a little bit tighter too. And this is doing some inspection. And this inspection is checking out those uh, joints. So what we'll do is we'll hold uh, right in, you know, right by where that inner tie rod is at. And I'll put my hand up in there, you know, it's right in the bellows area. And then I'll move, kind of force that wheel to go back and forth. And you can actually feel the play going back and forth. And if it's, if, if it's should be pretty doggone tight. If it's not, then you, you've got a joint that's starting to wear out. And it's important to address that quickly. If that, uh, that ball, you know, that joint uh, or that tie rod breaks, it can actually, you know, when you're going down the street, cock the wheel and you can lose control of it when you're driving down the street too. So uh, this is pretty much what I wanted to cover. I, uh, again, I will put this uh, newer PowerPoint up for you. I've got the old PowerPoint um, that was only available, but this just came out recently. And actually I'm actually getting uh, preview copies of this because I'm part of the James Halderman site. Uh, yeah, I pay a subscription for it. But I'll put this up for you, so your, um, for your, uh, you know, for you to look at, and please, you know, take the time to read the chapter. Uh, that will help you out quite a bit too. All right. Until next time, I'll go ahead and uh, close this out. Uh, I, again, I, I know I keep on talking about it, but make sure you uh, keep up to date on your grades. If you have a concern, please inbox me. Again, always inbox me. Uh, and I can get and talk to you. I want you to do well. Uh, I want you to, um, you know, get to your goals in life. And one of them is passing this class. Um, also, if you have a general question, please feel free to use the student lounge. In the student lounge, you can ask, you ask questions of your you know, fellow classmates. And I monitor it. If I see something when nobody's really giving a good answer, or I shouldn't say a good answer. Uh, a, a answer or you know, it may be a little bit, I, I, I'm not quite sure. I'll, I'll jump in and I'll give the answer to everybody. That way everybody has the answer to the question. All right. So until next time, I will be talking to you. Take care and uh, I'll see you soon.